Scream Queens, Season 2, Episode 8, Thoughts. This episode is called Rapunzel, Rapunzel. Another episode I love. Spoilers for the show leading up to and including this episode. And, uh, yeah, before I dive in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So happy to see Wes back. I, of all the characters that just, yeah, really, really, really glad he's back. And I love that he insisted on being awake during the procedure so he could explain all the, the heartbreak as they are removing the, yeah, and, and the thing, you know, I, look, I'll tell you now what I told you at the time, I don't think you should be making this one coin seem, you know, talk, talk about that above all others. But it's the most important one. And the the hairball looks like Trump's wig. Holy crap. And um yeah, so so Kathy when they were dating, and by the way, Jamie Lee Curtis also directed this episode in addition to playing Kathy Munch. She ruined his relationship with uh, Grace, which, yeah, I can 100% see that, uh, you know, like, it's the kind of thing, if you, if some, if I had watched someone theorize, you know, based on season one, maybe Wes will come back and it'll turn out that Kathy ruined his relationship with Grace, yeah, like, she was not really that fond of Grace, but she was attracted to Wes. Are you saying that what that is, what we have here is a giant Ziploc bag full of commie pubes? Wow. <clears throat> and the, the Chanel's were wondering how uh, number, number five hasn't gone, you know, really crazy with eating her own hair. I have to admit, I was surprised that it was only the second book Wes was writing that was historical playlists. That really seemed like that would be the very first one. But he's okay now because Tony Robbins yelled at him. And the... the the big full head of hair, which there are Polaroids, just wow. And Zayday is on social media, like, <laughs> right in front of patients, you know, making fun of the, the illness they have, just holy crap. And we realize that. Chamberlain Jackson has, you know, is constantly posting, like, immediately after she posts something, he'll post a comment. And there are some problems between Brock and Chanel number one because of the age gap. He's trying to have a serious conversation and she's like got her phone out as ah you've got dog ears and a big dog tongue you know while he like you know he's trying to share something just yeah can you put your phone down what you mean like by my midriff <laughs> she literally can't imagine that he means like i'm trying to have a conversation get off the phone just yeah and let's see. Yeah, and they, you know, Brock tries to focus on the thing that, you know, it's like, okay, if a conversation between us is not going to go well, you know, he later says, when I try to string four or five set words together in a sentence, she, she you know, she gets on her phone. 
but yeah, so, you know, the thing that he's, you know, supposed to really like about Chanel is the, the sex, and turns out that's not great either, and he imagines Kathy there, and she gets very upset, which, you know, yeah, that's, that's not a good look. And Zayde uses a bath to lure in the green meanie, and they do actually manage to get <clears throat> the um, a bit of the costume, you know, pu pulled it out of the dream. I mean, that's got to be a reference to to Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Because like, it's such a yeah, it's a it's a turning point that, you know, you can pull part of the, the, the suit out, so, to, yeah, and I like Kathy saying, you know, the, the, it's, she, she's just as happy to be with to, to you know, to be with Brock as she is with Wes, And the the confrontation where you know Chanel is like stay away from my man, and and you know Kathy you know makes the the statement and then you know does a dramatic exit and then she wait I shouldn't have to go you're the, this is my office you go and, and Chanel is like no I'm gonna stand right here. And of all the Chanel's, number five is the only one who thinks that Jimlin Jackson isn't texting too much. There, that's my good deed for the year. I don't think that's the saying. I think it's like, I, I, day, daily or week, I, I think it's a good deed for the day or something like that, you know. <clears throat> really love when Zayde talks to... I think it is it the character credited as old man Frank Bernie R.I.P. who Yeah. Um, you know, the the it's just really, really so creepy. You know, both him and just all the you know, going down yeah, all these costumes just yeah. And I really love the, the, yeah, you know, she's like knocking on the door and he's like, we're closed. And she's like, this piece of fabric. And he's like, come in. You know, it's like, okay, this is serious. You know, the, let's see. And <laughs> he keeps talking about the handies that are connected, you know, and, and, I don't remember a handy being connected with that one. And very fun when the Chanel's talk about Brock and the, uh, Hester Ulrich comes through yet again. The smartest of the Chanel's. No wonder she was able to kill so many people and blame the Chanel. You know, and it's, yeah, frame the Chanel's for it. But, yeah, you know, if they hadn't gotten the decade completely wrong, it might actually have been kind of sweet to make a party for Brock that made him, made him feel at home. And the fact that, like, she heard him say mash, at first thought it was potato mash, thought that the best... The most popular television show of all time was Boy Meets World, which she really should see. When he then told her, MASH was set during the Korean War, really about the Vietnam War, what she took away from it was that it was World War II, which just, like, literally the only way you could... 
she literally doesn't, she can't tell the wars apart. She, uh, despite the, the huge difference, like, I guess there's some chance that to her, America has only ever waged one war, and it's just, you know, what whatever. World War II, Vietnam, same thing. Oh my god. And Zayde calls Chamberlain, but her number is blocked because it's only 6 p.m. You know, 9 p.m. is when it unblocks, so, yeah. I, I quite appreciate, you know, modern horror always has to write out cell phones because they completely take away a lot of the danger. This was a pretty good, uh, yeah. And we learn that it was Jane Hollis's brother who killed, you know, the, the, let's see, it was the year after when her husband died. So, yeah, that does... That does make a lot more sense than, you know, obviously it couldn't have been Cassidy. He was a baby. Would have been very impressive if he was able to... <laughs> but, yeah, the fact that it's not Jane herself makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Why are you trying to bring logic into this conversation? Can't you tell we're crazy? And yeah, the tea was poisoned, or no, not poisoned. There was uh, sleeping medication or something. And and yeah, the, the yeah the party for Brock. The, <laughs> there's stuff from the '40s. You went too far back. And. Yeah, you know, it's, he's like, how old do you think I am? And she says, honestly, I don't know. You could be 40, you could be 60. And he's like, you know that for me to be part of the greatest generation, I'd have to be 80. Just, yeah. And, and the... Just, yeah. Um, let's see. The... Um, right, and yeah, Zayde wakes up tied up, just like she was in season one, and it's not like, oh no, it's like, not again, don't you just hate it when you wake up and you're tied up by a serial killer? Such a hassle. You know, the party, I, at first I was offended, and afraid for the future of our country. Which, seriously, like, if you can't tell apart such distinct wars, like, it's, you know, nobody's, act obviously she didn't, you know, she didn't experience any of them, but, like, there's so much, there, you know, in, in, there's a lot of, of material on the wars, and, Certainly a lot of, a, a chunk of that should be taught in, like, school and college. <laughs> oh my god, are you going to propose? Oh, no, no, I just got a bum knee. And, yeah, so they're, they're back together, and then he tells Mount Munch that, you know, they should have an affair... And let's see. yeah, and and you know, Chamberlain talks to to Wes about the the really messed up stuff that he found in the the hair, and yeah, Wes is the second Green Meanie, the one who ordered you know by what's it called. Uh, it's by by mail, I think it was, we, which is very cool because uh, like up to this point we did think that there, you know, and yeah, the obviously the the oh hold on wait was the first one uh, 
Huh. No, yeah, yeah, that's gotta be, yeah. You know, <clears throat> and yeah, he explains how, how Grace really spiraled after the events of season one. And during the Taylor Swift Katy Perry feud, she sided with Katy. And <laughs> no matter how many hats he bought her, she wouldn't wear any of them. You know, and, and he said, you know, she was well on the way to becoming an adorable hat model who was unironic about it. And and it is like she did wear she wore many hats in season one. And you know, the the let's see. Yeah, the, the, you know, you said she went to Stanford. Stanford. Mental institution. I, I love when one of these is, because, like, so he wasn't lying. He was just the people, him. people, you know, it's not his fault if they thought he meant that Stanford. And Stanford Mental Asylum, the only way to get in is to score very, very high. Just, yeah. And he... Yeah, just really, really cool. Uh, did not see that coming, but, you know, Wes... Like, every character on this show, if if they turn out to be a serial killer, it's like, yeah, you know what, there were signs. But the... Yeah, Wes really is a, a very, very compelling... Like, as as one of the the serial killers that really is, yeah. Not much else to say about this episode. I thought there were a lot of really great details in the the party. You know, number five is dressed as. Ah, uh, hold on, I'll have her name momentarily because she played Dorothy. A uh, Judy Garland, and I think one of them was actually dressed as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, which is also like, yeah, you went way too far back. Um, that might be it, right? Uh, I like you know the 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 part where like the reason that the the Wes and Munch survive. Although actually, I guess maybe Wes had staged that the way that um I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. In season one there was that you know it turned out to have been that there was a staged attack on Gigi. You know, but yeah, at first it seems like, oh, Wes and Kathy survived an attack by the Green Meanie because he has body spray and they were hiding under the, the bed, which is like, so, it's so typical slasher for someone to survive by being just out of reach and maybe, you know, hiding or, or to, yeah, and, and this thing of like, I mean... <laughs> Why doesn't the green meanie just flip the bed back over? You know, it, there's no reason to just stab randomly into it like that. Um, and and yeah, you know, when when Wes says, "I'm not about to fight a serial killer. I don't want my stitches to reopen," that does make a lot of sense. But yeah, um, that is it for this one so the the next uh, my next vlog on an episode of the show should be sometime next week and until then what's the gag <laughs>